Hello and welcome to the DC United Kingdom podcast. I'm your host, James Graham. This is season two, episode 12. And for back-to-back episodes, Russ Knauss has joined me. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing very, very well. Um, firstly, um, what a comeback against Toronto. That was uh, a great second half. Yeah, it was an interesting game to say the least. Um, <laughs> The everything that went went uh, into the game prior, and then also obviously during the game, and the way it finished out was uh, was interesting. Was a good way to finish that game, that's for sure. I'm glad we were able to leave with a point. No, absolutely. So it's really a a game of two halves. I know it sounds cliche, but it was. Uh, don't mind me saying anything that could have gone wrong in the first half. Kind of did. Obviously, Junior yeah. right now got sent off. We were two 0 down all over Twitter even myself we were thinking this is it's not looking good but I think you moving back into centre mid kind of changed things around a little bit (laughs) yeah I mean we uh it was a tough first half um like you said everything that went wrong could have went wrong um kind of shot ourselves in the foot a little bit and went down 2-0 definitely not definitely wasn't a good half from us um everyone understood that going into halftime and just knew um being down a man that we had to change change the way we're playing, um, really go out and give our best effort and not let it get out of hand and uh, try to come back, get get that first goal, which we did, obviously, and then get the second goal to uh, tie the game. Um, I think the, you know, me moving back into the middle and then also some of the substitutions helped, you know, close down the middle and, and allowed us to kind of, you know, build momentum throughout the second half, even with a man down. Um, you know, Ben said this too, but, but the actual guys who subbed in the game brought some energy uh, that we needed. So overall, I think it was a, a good effort. And, you know, I, I'm actually very proud of that second half and what we did. Um, that that shows a lot of mentality and something that we can definitely use and build on going into this New England because results like that are huge, huge to uh, success, and especially in the tournament. Absolutely. I mean, you can take the heart from that. And it was just... It was fantastic to watch. I mean, I was at work watching the uh, first half on my lunch break and then managed to speak and watching the second half. And you could just, it was just great to watch. And I'm just there, just going around, running around, celebrating, get, seeing that second goal go in. But I obviously do want to talk about uh, Higuain's goal because that was oh, just yeah. something else. How was it on seeing that on the pitch? was uh super happy because people is a, a great guy great team teammate um he's been working hard to get back and for him to come in and then have that as his as his first uh appearance with the club and then first goal was unbelievable um just seeing it from behind too because i had the vertical <laughs> angle to see him tip it up it was all in s- slow motion for me hoping that uh that we are able to convert that one and he did it better than I could have ever imagined, um, especially after a tough, you know, second half. That was later in the second half too, right? Where we're yeah. working our tails off, the the heat, everything. I mean, that was one of the more, more difficult games I've been been involved in, and uh, for him to cap that off with his debut with the club, it was awesome. So, and obviously, since he, it's been a while since he actually did sign, so it's took a time to uh, get his debut in. But what has he been like having him around at the club? Yeah, he's a very good professional. Um, definitely brings something that most players can't do in this league, which is what he showed, obviously. And then also um, the ability, like in possession, to find find spaces that normal players can't find or don't realize they're in. Um, good teammate, you know, good person. It, I mean, he's just his. He understands his role right now, but he also is very hungry to continue to go and um, wants to get out in the field. And obviously did very well um but people's an awesome guy that was a a great addition for for our club um and all all the guys feel the same way as i do that's great to hear another person who uh made his uh, debut was uh kevin um great to see him i had a lot of uh, messages come in to me just saying yeah. how good he was and that was from fans of other teams so great to see him make his debut as well yeah that's that was also very exciting and definitely a positive that um I think the club can take from from that game as well. 
something that maybe doesn't get focused on, but having a player come in from the academy and do really well in his debut is uh, well, super important, um, super cool to see. I think f- for me, it was really neat to see Kevin. Obviously, he's a talented player, um, attacker with you know a lot of skill, but for me, what stood out most was his effort. And uh, that's really what, what made him have such a good debut and really find himself within the game and, and provided a spark ultimately for us too. Um, to to go out and and get the result we did so um, I think it's you know there's a lot of positives for him moving forward I think if he uh, continues to bring that type of effort into not only the game days but every single day in training and really push himself um, on off the field in the gym whatever whatever it is he has a bright future absolutely and like I said great to see him make his debut and hopefully he'll make a few more appearances during the tournament. The second goal, um, that was just the icing on the cake. Um, just seeing that ball coming in, burn bound with the header across goal and uh, Fred just nodding it in. In added time, as we like to call it over here in the UK, Fergie time. Um, yeah. how, how did that feel? I mean, you can obviously see the joy and the elation and all the players, again, on the field. What was that like? Oh, that's an awesome feeling. I mean... When you uh, get to experience that, right, a last minute goal, it, it doesn't matter if you're if you're down, you're losing, and you end up tying the game, or if you win, it's a similar type of feeling because, you know, the belief, I wouldn't say the belief, the belief is always there, but the the result is showing otherwise. So when you get that goal, it's it's so relieving. Um, for me, I was actually in between both of them, so I. I saw the ball coming here to Steve and then I basically had to make almost a 360 and then I followed (laughs) it into the goal. So it was, it was funny. Um, But Fred's been pretty, pretty clutch with his finishes here the last two games. So. Yeah. First time he's got back-to-back goals in MLS. Um, Has he been giving uh, some of the strikers a bit of stick? Uh, I hope so. We'll see here against New England. (laughs) I mean, if he can make it three for three, I'd that's just yeah. going to be absolutely awesome. Um, before I kind of want to talk about the uh, New England game, I've seen you on Instagram playing a bit of golf. How was the golf game going? It was good. It was a good time. Um, we did that last week, earlier in the week. My performance wasn't great, <laughs> but uh, I had a good time. Felipe, I golfed with Felipe and and Fred, so we were kind of on the same level. And then. Uh, uh, Steve, um, Julian, and Chris Seitz, they, they went up ahead. They were going to play the first hole with us, and then they decided uh, the level's too low, and <laughs> we're going to hold them back. So um, that was a nice little getaway just to get your mind off of just being in a hotel room all day. Um, yeah. Definitely a fun sport. I don't know if I – I don't want to commit and say that it'll become a hobby, but it is, uh, it is really fun, uh, and it was a good time, good time to do that with teammates. Yeah, I also noticed you using the the baseball grip rather than the interlocking grip. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of the interlock grip yet. No, <laughs> it just is doesn't it? feel right. But also, my technique is probably very poor, so um, <laughs> I'm gonna need some more repetitions. To yeah, I mean, I used to be a very very keen golfer. Unfortunately, dodgy knees uh, from being a bit too tall has uh, prevented me from playing again. But uh, interlocking grip really does work. It does work. Okay. <laughs> I'll maybe have to just keep trying that out. Um, and also on the last episode, you mentioned that you might read some books. Have you actually read any books then? I'm still going. I have two books I'm working on right now. I'm kind of switching between both of them. So yeah. I'll probably finish. I'll finish both of them before before yeah. the tournament's done. So well, uh, you 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 should have plenty of time. You got to the final, right? Yeah. So I, and I committed to reading them. So they're definitely going to get done. I'm not. I'm not letting that go. <laughs> um, so, like I said, we've got uh, New England up next, um, which is an 8 o'clock kickoff your time? Yep. 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 Which is a 1 a.m. kickoff in, in the UK. I will be up watching it. Um, how are we going to tackle this one? Because um, they've got some really, really good players like Gustavo Bo um, and Carlos Hill. How are we going to kind of counteract that? Um, yeah, New, New England's actually, I think, one of the more underrated teams in the league. Um, I think they're a very good team. Uh, within their attacking group, like you said, Bo and, 
and heal those guys and the other two they there's a lot of movement there so um, a lot of interchanging of positions um, something we'll have to be aware of and be tactically be ready um, always checking shoulders good communication really closing down the middle you know not letting those guys take advantage of us um, I think is is a super important important thing for us from the defensive side um, yeah. like you said and there is obviously a lesser gap between the games. Uh, is that affected the preparation at all? I don't know if it affected the preparation. Um, it's something we have to adapt to. We know, obviously, the rescheduling of it delayed it, so we couldn't really get many practices in to prepare for New England. Uh, we've been having to recover, so there's not too much time on the field, which is, I guess it does impact it in that sense, but... Um, we, we kind of knew that was coming. We had spent a lot of time preparing for Toronto since that was our first game and didn't even talk about New England. So we've only really had two, three days here. But that's a team I think a lot of the guys are are familiar with. Um, Bruce has done a good job coming in and, and switching them around. But we, we, we do know what they're about. I think the coaching staff has given us all the information that we need to go out and be successful from a, you know, from a player scouting perspective. So it's a, it's – a little tough preparing from our side, like how we're going to play um, with also, you know, some tactical changes and stuff. So we'll see. I think, uh, I think we can be pretty confident going into the game, even though there's only three days between. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it just feels a bit, bit strange. Obviously the game against Toronto was obviously a delayed by, well, it was delayed twice, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, if we can talk about those delays, the first time you guys were obviously at the ground ready to play, how did that feel knowing that once you've been told that the game had been rescheduled, um, was that something that you were aware of that was going to happen or was it just kind of a bit of a shock? Yeah, so Sunday morning was uh, was pretty chaotic because we had COVID testing like 6 o'clock, 6.30 in the morning. Um, all the while, we knew... We had to prepare for a game. Um, there was talks maybe like, I don't know. There was, We knew that we were going to the stadium, us as a club. We were going to go there and warm up and, and uh, get ready to play the game. And for me as a player, I put a lot of mental preparation into it. So when you get there to the stadium and you're ready to go, you're, you know, I drank my, my pre-workout, right? I'm ready to go in the game, go warm up and, all of a sudden it gets canceled. It's definitely, it's definitely tough from a mental side to really then um, calm back down and then refocus for the, for the following morning. With that said, we didn't even know when the game was going to be rescheduled until the afternoon. So like there was not much time to, you know, prepare for it from a mental side because you get, you know, you, you take so much time to be able to, get to that one moment and then it gets canceled right before you. So it definitely, there's a, it was an emotional roller coaster for sure. But um, with that said, I mean, we can still be happy with that result coming out of that game with everything yeah. that went into it, because there's a lot that went into that game that a lot of people don't know about even outside of just the, you know, cancellation part of it. So. Oh, Oh, there we go. That's a little bit there. Um, how has it been inside the bubble? So on the last episode, it was just a couple of days before you traveled down. How has it been in there? Has it been to your expectations? Has the food been good? Because there's been a couple of photos flying around about the sandwiches. I mean, for me, I, I love food. I love eating. So I don't think the food's been terrible. I think it's been pretty good. Certain days you get sick of eating the same food. It's It's like if you go anywhere for game days, preseason, you kind of, you get the same types of food. So um, it's, it hasn't been bad. I mean, from a, you can tell the last few days, uh, initially there was a lot of anxiety and, you know, worry, a lot of players worried about the bubble and if it's going to work, if it's not, I think the last few days have shown pretty positive. And I think a lot of guys in our team feel safe now, um, which is good because now we can focus on the, on the competition, which was tough probably the first week of being here. Yeah. Um, but overall it's, it's been pretty, pretty good. It's a little, I'll say, um, 
boring not being able to leave the hotel yeah. but something we have to deal with that's we're, we're we're here to play we're here to play and win the tournament so there's not too much else that we need to concern ourselves with yeah and if you do get bored have a round of golf yeah exactly <laughs> so i was just gonna ask about again a bit more about the bubble itself um Like I said, the game against uh, New England, do you re- because of the short uh, preparation time, do you re- have you been told about any sort of lineup changes? Is there going to be some rotation? Are we going to expect something similar? Um, or are you not know. allowed to say? I don't want to say. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Damn it. Thought I could have got something Sorry. sneaky in there. That's all right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I've forgotten what the I was going to ask about. This. I'll say this. Yeah. Um, we know we need to come out with a, a better performance. We don't have, um, no matter what the changes are, we, we need to come out and, and be ready, um, be able to put out a good performance because we, uh, we're not, even with the result, we weren't completely happy with the Toronto game. So yeah. this is, this is another chance for us to get out there and, and, uh, put on a good performance for the club. So what can you change then because obviously it was a bit of a slow start against Toronto was there a particular reason was it because of the rescheduling or was it just the fact that it's just your first game back well there's, it just I took a little there's bit of time so many, there's so many variables like you said right that go into it um yeah. I wouldn't fully consider them excuses because they they do have an impact on you know on me my other teammates performance absolutely but um I I think that's kind of hard to put, you know, a uh, a I'll say a point on on that game going into New England. We have a lot of those variables out of play, right? Yeah. Um, and I think it's a better time for us. I think, you know, for us to be able to perform better, I think there's got to be more of a willingness to work with half. It just wasn't wasn't good enough from the team collectively uh, we need we need all 11 guys to have a solid individual performance to be able to come out and and really put on a good team performance if you have a couple guys not performing then that's obviously what can happen right so we have to all be consistent on the day and really be willing to work for each other with and without the ball um, I think that's going to be a big a big key for us for New England and a late kickoff must be a little bit nicer to have instead of the 9 a.m. Must be, is it going to be a little bit cooler in terms of the temperature? Oh, yeah. It'll be completely different. Um, I mean, you can, you see these 9 a.m. games and it's brutal out yeah. in the, out in the sun. Um, so I think the, the evening games definitely have a, obviously it's still hot. You're down in Florida, you have the humidity, but at the same time, the evening games are much better. There's, there's an ability to really have that, extra leg up to then you know make that extra run make that extra movement to get the ball make that extra back press to come down and and stop an attack you know those types of things are things that we'll be able to do at a higher level I think you know tomorrow evening compared to what we had against Toronto yeah and I've actually remembered what I was going to ask about the bubble okay well let's hear it um it was have you been able to um catch up with any any other players from any other teams or being able to catch uh, up with the, some of the games or anything like that? Yeah. Um, it's actually been quite weird <laughs> having, being able to see all former teammates and just other teams within the hotel. You go, you play Toronto and then you see them at dinner three hours later, you know, you see them walking by him in the hotel. Uh, definitely, definitely weird. We're in this, we're in the side of the hotel where there's a little bit less teams, but yeah. it's, it's really cool being able to, see a lot of former guys and, and just catch up, um, during the, during the year, you get to see them all throughout the year. Now I'm actually getting to see all these guys like in one place, one time during the year. So it's pretty cool. Um, and obviously also former staff and stuff. We saw Francis, I just saw Francisco Tobar, our old team coordinator from last year. Oh, wow. from, yeah. From the previous years. And, uh, he's doing well. So definitely exciting to see people like that. That's- that's really nice. Um, I think that's all I've got to um, ask. Um, you've, we've talked about, obviously, the New England game, the Toronto game. 
a little bit about the bubble. Um, thank you for taking the time out again um, from inside the bubble this time to yeah. join me on the show. And uh, it'll be great to see us again tomorrow evening, getting those three points um, added into the group and obviously to the uh, overall standings as well. So good luck. Thank and, you. Uh, not that you'll need it, but fingers crossed we get that uh, victory uh, tomorrow night. Let's do it. Appreciate Indeed. it. Thanks for having me on. Cheers, man. And um, yeah, thank you to Russ for coming on. Um, you probably heard it was incredibly honest. I thought from the thoughts about the Toronto game, the rescheduling of it, the uh, the game against New England Revolution. I was the thoughts on that. Couldn't quite get. A bit of lineup news, unfortunately, but you know, he did say that they're really looking forward to it and uh, carrying on that momentum that they built up in the second half against Toronto. Because I think you'll agree if you watch the game, that was something else. Who would have thought down to 10 men, 2 0 down at half time? We brought it back in Fergie time, as I said, to equalize. It's just who it was awesome, but you know, we've got this big game against uh, New England coming up, and I can't overstate the fact that we need these three points. We need it. Um, it is a group stage and it is it's a World Cup format. Every point counts. So let's get those three points. Um, they've got some key players. You've got, like I said to Russ, you've got Carlos Hill. You've got Gustavo Bo. It's They're creative. Gustavo's a great finisher. So if Birnbaum and Brion can really nullify that attack, Knaus gets all over Carlos Hill, we should be okay. I don't want to say definitely, but we should be okay uh, because there's strength all over the field in that lineup. So let's have the team focus on that. And we generally do okay against New England. We've had some good results against them. But we've had some a couple of shockers. I think we'll definitely get a point. I'm fairly confident we can get the three. Fairly confident. We scored two goals against Toronto, who and are, are not a bad side at all. They've got some good defenders. And to be honest, we did really well. Great to see uh, Pippa uh, get his debut and get that goal. Great to see Kevin on the pitch. And I Let's just continue utilising that that uh, bench because the fact that we've got five subs, it can make a huge difference. And I was listening to Ben in the pre-match press conference and he was saying about needs to utilise a substitution at half-time so it didn't affect the three breaks that, that, we were, that you get in the game. Great thinking. I know, Ben, you don't normally use all your subs. You did. And the way you did it is really pleasing to see. So, fantastic work. Well done. And what a turnaround. Can't argue with that. Let's do the same against New England. We can do this. We can reclaim our reign. We can win this trophy. It's, it's a tall order. But the way things are going, the results that have happened so far, I mean, earlier on today, Cincinnati... Won. Let that just sink in. Cincinnati won a game. And they not only just won a game, they beat Atlanta United. I mean, granted, Atlanta were down to 10 men when they scored, but they still won. That's That just shows you how much this game has changed since lockdown. When you look at Orlando, usually the whipping boys of the league, they're, they're top. They're top of their group. It's it's just unusual. So we didn't have a great end to the last season, but that's last season. That's as we've seen with Orlando, we've seen with Cincy. That's the past. We need to forget about that past. We need to focus on the future and get this game underway. Get those first three points of this uh, tournament and qualify for the next round. Um, I just need to give a shout out to the show sponsors, uh, MLS UK show. They are Elliot and Henry. 
they've been fantastic over lockdown. They've been doing a lot of interviews, as I've mentioned on previous episodes. But the last episode that they did was the first one back in the studio. And I was super excited to see it. Um, you can watch on YouTube. Um, you can listen to it on your favorite podcaster. Um, please tune in. Um, they, I can't believe it's been so long since they've actually done an episode together. They've done individual episodes. So they've had Chris Mueller on. Um, they've had John Champion on where they've both done individual interviews, but they've not been together. So great to see them. Um, hopefully we'll keep hearing them and have many more episodes coming from them soon. But from me... Um, I also want to thank the new members of DC United Kingdom. Uh, thank you for joining. That was great to see. Um, you might have seen that I was supposed to do a pre-match show with uh, the season ticket holders. Um, that, unfortunately, didn't quite happen to plan because of the uh, cancellation of the game. But it was great to um, speak to all your fans out there. So if you were in that uh, pre-match uh, gathering, I'm going to call it, um, and you're listening to the show, thank you. And if this is your first time listening, brilliant. Uh, great to have you on board. I hope you subscribe to the show. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, click the subscribe button, hit the like button, and share this out. If you're listening to the show on your podcaster, um, give it a rating. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, um, that's as far as I know, that's the only place that you can actually do this. Um, give a rating. Um, I would love it if you can give it a review as well, um, just to spread the word. Uh, Spotify, follow it on there. It's on Google Podcasts. It's on TuneIn Radio. It's pretty much everywhere where you can listen to a podcast, um, even on your smart speakers. I mean, I, I shouted at my uh, Google Home and it decided to uh, play it. How awesome is that? I think you can play it on Alexa as well. Um, but I don't have Alexa. Anyway, um, a quick prediction uh, before we uh, finish the show. I'm going to go with a DC United 2, New England Revolution nil. Going to go for a 2-0 win. I know I said that last time about Toronto, um, but, you know, setting offs and slow start kind of, you know, didn't make it go good. But we scored the two goals, so I got that bit right. I know we've got a great defence. Bill Hamid, he can keep another clean sheet. He's great at doing that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with the 2-0 win. Let me know if you agree with that. Um, just drop a comment um, or hit me up on Twitter um, at DC United Kingdom. Uh, great to hear your predictions for this game. Um, if you're listening to after the game, let me know if I was right. I might have forgotten by then, but let me know if I was right. Um, follow me on Twitter. Um, like the uh, Facebook page if you haven't already. It is DC United Kingdom FC. You just need to search for that. It's the same on Instagram as well, so drop me a follow. Um, ben also follows me, so why shouldn't you? Just going to put that out there. And uh, until next time, vamos United. <laughs>